Bueno, pues muchas gracias, Marcos. Vamos a terminar la sesión de mañana con Daniel Escuca. Daniel, técnicamente, no es de la ESA, trabaja en una empresa que trabaja para la ESA, para la Agencia Espacial Europea, pero para mí Daniel y su equipo son la, la ESA, la Agencia Espacial Europea, en redes, porque llevan las cuentas de, de Twitter, de, de Facebook, de sitios web, Flickr, etcétera, etcétera. Organizan saraos parecidos a estos, pero para temas relacionados con el espacio. Y le hemos pedido que nos venga a contar cómo de difícil o cómo de fácil es conseguir a los científicos, a los técnicos que están metidos en estas misiones espaciales, de las bondades de contar todo esto a través de redes sociales, a través de Internet, de llegar a la gente directamente. Así que, sin más, os dejo con Daniel. Gracias. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Daniel Skuka. Thank you very much, Wicho, uh, for this uh, introduction. I'm, I'm, I'm not a paranoid person, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, it, it, normally it is sort of uh, the worst job to have the last presentation before, before lunch. But on top of that, uh, I, I don't speak any Spanish, so, you know, it's, uh, my brain's just going uh, crazy with all this mixed language stuff. And so I'm, I'm, I'm suspecting there was a conspiracy here against me, but... Uh, Actually, I, 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 I hope it'll be a good presentation. I hope to give you some uh, background on what it's like to do uh, social media at ESA, and particularly in the, in the domain of uh, what we call real-time uh, communication, uh, which has got to do with uh, what's happening with the missions and the astronauts and stuff, uh, stuff up there. Okay, uh, I work as the senior editor for spacecraft operations, which is to say I'm the one guy at uh, ESOC, the European Space Operations Center, who is native English, and I populate our websites. I work on our social media accounts. I work on uh, social media events, event planning, and lots of other stuff. Um, I work for a company called EJR Quartz, which is based in, uh, in Leiden, in, uh, in uh, Holland as I mentioned on my uh, introduction, but I'm, I'm working full-time on-site at ESOC, uh, which is the ESA establishment in Darmstadt, Germany, uh, working with the, the larger ESA uh, communication uh, department. Overall, in the ESA communication department, it's uh, 100, 110 people, and uh, there's uh, a, a sort of a diverse group of us who work on social media and web. Uh, some of us do it as, as mostly uh, our full-time project. Uh, others do it part-time. And then, of course, we have engineers and scientists across the agency who are doing Twitter and, and some other stuff as well. Okay, next slide. Aha. <coughs> uh -huh. Ah, see, I am getting more paranoid. Now there's no pointer. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> It's a conspiracy. Okay, uh, I'll start off. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about uh, ESA. I hope uh, many of you would, would already know some of this information if I'm, if I'm doing my job. Uh, ESA, of course, is the European Space Agency. It's a... Um, it's, uh, it's a treaty organization, currently with uh, 22 member states, plus uh, uh, several others um, who are uh, uh, cooperating with ESA. It has about uh, 2,300 staff. The budget uh, there in 2017, as you can see, uh, five and three quarter billion euro. Um, over 80 satellites have been flown since, uh, well, since the agency was, uh, was formed. And uh, right now from ESOC, where I work, we're flying 11 different missions, which have uh, 18, 18 satellites. Uh, of course, some of the, some of the missions are, uh, are multi-satellite. Okay, next slide. If, great. Yeah, okay, there's the, the full listing of the, the member states. Of course, Spain is, uh, is a very important uh, uh, member state. Uh, not only do we have uh, 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 an establishment, ESAC, the European Space Astronomy Center uh, near Madrid. Uh, we also have uh, one of our most valuable ground stations, the Cerberos ground station, which is uh, about a three-quarter of an hour drive from ESAC, and uh, there's a, a great deal of activity that takes place in both those locations. And of course, with Sabreros, we're using that ground station to uh, communicate. Okay, to communicate with our um, uh, all of our mission, our, our deep space missions, uh, Rosetta, uh, ExoMars, Mars Express. Uh, it is used uh, on a on a pretty much a, a, a daily basis. <coughs> Excellent. Um, okay, so ESA uh, is actually one of the few agencies um, that is actually conducting uh, activities across the full, full spectrum of, of what can be done in space. 
Uh, we are doing space science, obviously, with our exploration missions, human space flight, we have astronauts on board the, the ISS. Um, we do Earth observation, we do uh, launchers, of course, you see our big blue logo on the side of the, uh, the launchers taking off from, uh, from Kourou. Uh, navigation is a, is a big topic, I think you've probably heard about uh, Galileo. Uh, operations, where I work, uh, we, we, we build all the facilities on the ground that are needed to control the satellites in space. Uh, we have ground stations uh, around the world, Australia, Argentina, uh, as well as Spain. We do technology development, uh, that's a very big aspect of uh, what ESA does in Europe is to uh, support uh, the development of new technologies that have obviously space applications, uh, but also can be, uh, can be used in other, other domains as well. And uh, 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 telecoms uh, is a big effort. Um, so uh, we, we, I, I, I guess the point I'd, I'd like to make here is that, um, uh, you know, people often compare NASA to ESA. That's one of the most common ones uh, we ever hear. But actually, NASA doesn't do some of those things. NASA doesn't do uh, telecommunication satellites, for example. So uh, there are some, some real differences between the, uh, the two agencies. <coughs> OK, I, 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 I could show you slide after slide after slide of what ESA does in the realm of communication. I just thought I'd throw all the key words I could think of <coughs> into one big, uh, one big wordle. Uh, in the realm of communication, we do websites. It's not just one site. There are more websites than I can actually count. There are, uh, there's, there, 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 there's social media. Uh, there are, there's print. We do the use of bulletin. We do uh, all kinds of graphics and animations and movies and videos. We do audio. We are doing uh, live webcasts on a regular basis. We are using uh, uh, a full range of social media channels uh, Twitter, Facebook, Flickr, Google+, it goes on and on. Uh, so we're really involved in the, in, in, in the full spread of what you can do uh, um, to communicate what goes on in, in, in space. Um, not all of those obviously have the same uh, degree of importance or, or, or results or benefits. And I must say that in the last, I guess, say since just before 2014, just before Rosetta, really social media has become... Uh, a really big part of, of, of what we do uh, nowadays, and that's a, that's a, a big difference, say, compared to just, uh, just five years ago. I'll give you just a quick overview of the social media channels uh, that, we, uh, that we look after each day, that we, that we curate or that we, we update. Uh, um, okay, that's our, our website on the, on the left, which, okay, you can find that under isa.int. Um, but then I, I, I wanted to list just a few of our, our sort of most important social media channels. Um, as you can see, uh, Flickr, YouTube, Instagram, uh, uh, live stream, daily motion, it goes on and on. Uh, Twitter, by the way, I, I, I did a rough count, just, just myself sitting at my desk, and I, I, I came up with 64 Twitter channels being operated uh, in somehow uh, either directly by ESA or uh, using the logo or by uh, well, one of our partners that we're, uh, uh, that we're very close with. So we have a lot of Twitter channels, and then that's not even counting the stuff that the astronauts do. The astronauts typically have uh, their own Twitter, uh, their own Facebook, uh, they can blog, uh, they have uh, photo galleries in Flickr. So, so on top of everything we do at the sort of the, the, the corporate level or the agency-wide level, we have the astronauts doing their stuff on top of that. Uh, I did a quick... Uh, calculation and it, uh, I came up with about a hundred social and, and web two channels uh, that we're currently uh, uh, using. So uh, you can see that for us, social media has become a really big uh, a really big effort. I put the little blue arrow just to show you that uh, some of those channels are are horizontal in the sense that they try to one channel will try to cover a lot or all of the activities that go on at the uh, at the agency, and some channels are very uh, dedicated, very specific dedicated to a specific topic or a specific mission or a specific activity. Uh, it's obviously very difficult to do horizontal when the agency is doing so many, uh, so many diverse activities across so many different domains. Uh, we, you end up uh, doing a bit of a trade-off uh, no matter what you're trying to cover. Um, looking just at Twitter, and as you can see, this is just one of our, our social media efforts. I uh, listed all the accounts that had anything more than 1,000 followers. Some of the accounts just have a few hundred followers. They're relatively new, or they don't tweet that often, or uh, they're perhaps not that <laughs> the most compelling. But uh, for the ones that we, uh, that we do sort of look after, curate, 
uh, try to put good information, try to put timely information. Uh, we have uh, uh, p some pretty good uh, uh, followerships there. And of course, off to the right-hand side, the second column, those are our, our active astronauts uh, who, uh, who do uh, tweet uh, on an active basis. I, I put up Astro Paulo there. Uh, he's actually not tweeting right now. He uh, tweeted a lot during his 2011 mission. Uh, then he stopped tweeting. He's going to go back to space this year. So uh, I'm looking forward. I, I, I hope we can convince him to uh, uh, go back to tweeting. He did some, some great stuff. Um, if you quickly, quickly add all those up, if we just use Twitter, and we had something that could cover all of those channels, a topic, uh, I don't know, it could be something that's very, very generic, like uh, climate change or uh, space debris, exobiology, things that almost any of those Twitter, Twitter accounts could, could talk about. Uh, we could easily reach uh, 10 million followers with uh, a day's worth of, uh, of tweeting. So it's a, it's a pretty strong channel. Uh, Twitter is a pretty strong um, platform for us, and, and our channels uh, do uh, uh, a lot for us. I just highlighted three of them. Is Operations is the one I work on each day. Uh, Social for Space. I also work on ESAMAR's webcam. Those are the ones I work on on a, on a routine basis. I, I, I do help out with uh, several of the others from, from time to time, and we definitely have a, a team of people looking after, after all of them. This is where I work. This is uh, at the European Space Operations Center in Darmstadt, Germany. I, I thought I'd th throw up some photos to show you or to give you a, um, a feeling as to the kind of information uh, we're tweeting about or also putting into blogs or putting into Facebook or putting into one of our other channels. Uh, it's, it's what I call, it's, it's, it's the real-time activities in space. It's got to do with spacecraft, Conducting actual activities, uh, obviously launch in the early orbit phase is, is relatively important. Uh, spacecraft that are conducting maneuvers uh, within Earth orbit uh, or spacecraft conducting maneuvers uh, uh, en route to someplace else, as Ro Rosetta did several times. Uh, maneuvers at Mars, maneuvers at other planets. Um, and obviously the big topic in the last uh, couple of years was all of the activity going on with uh, uh, Rosetta and Filet with the Comet landing, which was a, an extraordinarily complex uh, set of activities. Um, so uh, for us, Twitter is really one of the best channels. It, it, it seems to have a certain natural matchup that if you're doing something in real time and you want to get that information out there, Twitter is, is, is really the, 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 the top choice. Um, tweeting real-time information takes a lot of work. I, 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 it's not just a matter that me or any of my colleagues or, or anyone uh, has got the knowledge and, and the ability to simply sit down in front of a tweet deck or a Twitter client, Twitter client on your phone and, and, and to start tweeting. Um, this is a spreadsheet, and I won't, uh, it's obviously low resolution, I won't bore you with the, with the, uh, the details, but this is actually, this is a Twitter timeline. Uh, we've actually got the, uh, the mission timeline, we have the, uh, um, the uh, mission elapsed time, we have the local time, the UTC time, so we, we have that all uh, squared away. We have the actual activity happening, this is for a launch, this was for the launch of uh, uh, Sentinel-2 uh, last year. Uh, this is... Uh, the central column is, is the activity as to what's happening actually with the spacecraft and the launcher. Uh, we actually get that from the guys working on uh, the mission itself, the engineers, uh, the, the men and the women who work uh, on, on the flight control team or who are working in Kourou or uh, working on the project. So we actually get the, the, uh, the formal engineering timeline. We then have to translate that into, first of all, we cut out everything that in no event will interest anyone. We're then left with a sort of a, 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 a raw list of uh, uh, time-based high points or highlights. We then have to translate that into this, this, uh, this column over here, which is actually the draft tweets. We actually type them out and we use Excel. I, I cut off all, all the other columns. We actually set up that we get a little, it, it turns red if we go over 144 characters. We put the links that we want to put in. We put the hashtags. We put everything that we know we want to say. And we try to do that in uh, early enough time uh, before the launch that we can actually take our, our Twitter timeline and we can show it back to the engineers and uh, usually somebody like the flight director and say, hey, this is what we're going to tweet. Uh, this is the language we're going to use. 
does that all make sense to you? Have we gotten anything technically wrong, or have we have we have we misconstrued something here? You know, does this match what you're actually going to do? So we get a we get a very strong validation uh, before we even start the uh, uh, the tweeting. From that point on, once that's all approved, and we're actually at the point of the uh, of the activity, say the launch in this case. It's relatively mechanical if everything goes according to the timeline. Of course, with space in general, uh, with launches in particular, with uh, spacecraft activities uh, such as maneuvers, uh, things can always go wrong. And so uh, having uh, uh, the ability to, to react in real time when something doesn't go according to your plan is, uh, is rather important. Uh, I want to put this up because, as I say, it's not just me, it isn't just one person, it isn't even two people. It actually takes a big team of people to conduct a, 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 a lively, active, uh, technically or indeed scientifically correct and indeed um, compelling or attractive Twitter campaign. And so uh, in this set of pictures, I just want to show you some of my colleagues that I'm working with. This was uh, during various activities. That was Rosetta in 2014. Uh, this was ExoMars just last uh, last October. Uh, this was uh, ATV uh, from the ATV Control Center. ATV was the big 20-ton uh, cargo vessel that Europe sent five times to the ISS to deliver food and supplies and fuel and uh, equipment. And uh, this was uh, the Sentinel to go uh, launch just this past uh, just this past March in uh, in Darmstadt. So that's us on the communications side working in real time, but I want to show you another set of pictures. Now this kind of looks similar, I realize, it's just a bunch of people sitting around computers, but there's something important here, and I'll just, I'll just point out. So there you can see a couple of pictures of me, okay? <laughs> there's not, not meant to be a, a Daniel Selfie um, uh, presentation, but I want to show you that it's actually me standing beside some people. This is uh, Thomas Ormston, this is uh, Daniel Lakey, uh, up there is uh, Simon Wood, there's Tom again. Uh, sitting with us, and those are engineers who actually work on various missions. And they're sitting right beside us uh, during whatever the, 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 cr the critical activity is. In the case of ExoMars, it was the, uh, the entry into orbit around Mars. Um, in the case of, um, uh, with Daniel Lakey there, that's when actually uh, the Schiap uh, Schiaparelli lander separated from Mars, uh, from uh, uh, TGO, from the orbiter. Uh, uh, just, a, just a few days before uh, orbit entry in, uh, in October. Um, with uh, uh, Thomas there, that's uh, the MSG-4 launch uh, during the actual uh, liftoff. So uh, we, we've actually found out that uh, we need to have these guys with us because when stuff does happen that either deviates from the timeline that we've, we've prepared, I, I showed you, or that was totally unexpected in some way, uh, the best thing we can do is to have the experts sitting right with us uh, to actually tell us, well, here's what's actually happening, or here's why this happened, or, well, this has happened, we didn't expect it, or, 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 or to give us the context that we, the communicators, uh, need to have so that we can continue updating Twitter or posting in Facebook or posting in, in the blog uh, in real time and know that the information we're putting out is, uh, is accurate, or at least as accurate as what we know at that, uh, at that time. So uh, this is another very important photograph. I think maybe uh, a lot of people, I hope uh, you've seen this. <coughs> uh, this was actually from January 20th, 2014, when uh, uh, Rosetta woke up after its 31-month hibernation uh, in deep space. And that was the big day when uh, uh, Rosetta woke up and we knew we had a mission. We knew that we could continue continuing on uh, to the comet, uh, dispatch fillet and land on the comet uh, the following uh, November. So this was a, a great moment of joy, obviously. That's right in the main control room of, uh, uh, at ESOC. We made sure that that picture got maximum exposure. And uh, sure enough, it's, uh, it's all the, uh, the working people. It's, uh, there's Andrea Akamatsu, he's our, uh, our flight director for Rosetta. That's uh, Paolo Ferri, he is our head of mission operations for the, for the agency. Uh, uh, that's uh, Mark McCochran, our senior advisor for, for science. That's, that's Manfred, the guy with the funny look. That's our, our, our retired uh, head of mission operations. Uh, he was there too. He had seen uh, Rosetta being launched. Uh, that's uh, Roberto, uh, one of the engineers. This person here, though, is not an engineer. And maybe you recognize her from one of the previous uh, uh, photos. That's Emily Baldwin. She's, again, she's on the communication side. She's our uh, science editor. She works at STEC. 
visa establishment in Holland, and she's <coughs> right there, she's just beginning to tweet uh, um, uh, the series of tweets that we did from Rosetta at the moment of wake up, which was a series of, jeez, uh, I guess there were about a dozen or 15 tweets, all in the European member state, uh, uh, ESA, uh, European Space Agency member state languages, uh, beginning with uh, hello world, and then going through uh, with that same tweet in, uh, in the different languages. So it was really significant for us on the communication side that we could actually <coughs> negotiate, uh, indeed um, get our, our, our rather serious and rather dedicated and rather focused uh, engineering and science colleagues to let us sit right there uh, on console so that we could, we could get the information, uh, in this case, the uh, waking up of, of Rosetta and start tweeting as it was happening. So what's really important here is that, and I, I, I think our audience has now come to realize this after, uh, after a number of years, um, and it's a big culture change uh, amongst uh, our, our, our colleagues, and that is that you're getting the best, most accurate news on what's happening with the agency via Twitter first. And, and I remember uh, quite clearly, this is now 2014, just a few years before that, uh, sitting and blogging uh, about uh, 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 one of the ATV dockings, actually the first uh, ATV docking, which was in 2008, and getting calls from various colleagues in the communication department saying, oh no, you shouldn't be blogging that, that's not confirmed, you shouldn't uh, re release that to the public, uh, public. you should stop, to, uh, sh stop blogging. <laughs> so it's been a huge culture change that now we've actually got uh, somebody on the communication team sitting right with the teams and, and telling, telling the world uh, what's happening in, uh, in real time. Uh, I won't go through the details of this, this slide, but it's interesting to note that for Rosetta, our, our Rosetta mission, uh, which uh, began in 2004, uh, it actually predated uh, or almost predated uh, most of the social media platforms that are extremely important to us uh, today. So if you look at the entire timeline of the Rosetta mission from launch in 2004, uh, the deep space hibernation, uh, which uh, was from June 2011 until wake up in January 2014, through until approach to the comet, landing on the comet, the rest of the mission, and then finally we ended the mission last September. Um, we, the, the, this saw the actual uh, start and, and, as we now know, a uh, 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 meteoric or explosive growth in those social media platforms that are now so important to us. Uh, 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 Facebook, uh, Flickr, YouTube, Twitter, uh, uh, Instagram, Google+. And, and so uh, we were probably not the, f well, we were by no means the first, but I, I like to think we were as fast as we could have been uh, actually getting our mission onto some of those platforms. And for us, it, of course, was that it became, a, 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 it, I mean, the, the proof was in the pudding. We had a truly global uh, uh, resonance, a truly global echo in, uh, in, uh, in media. Okay, uh, again, we'll just go, go, th go through some of these quickly. This is uh, uh, part of the Rosetta campaign uh, involved uh, uh, for the wake up. We had a wake up campaign. We asked people to send us their, their videos. We, we carried a number of trailers. Uh, we had uh, people all over the world sending us um, submissions. They could, we had people, uh, uh, we had um, uh, partner agencies. We had uh, uh, just, just normal people. Um, and, and this was actually one of the first times, if not the first time that we actually reached out to just normal, regular people in, in various languages and uh, asked them to send us their stuff. And it really had uh, uh, excellent uh, uh, response. We had uh, over 200 entries, many of them done very, very well. We had schools, we had people, uh, we had people in Japan, we had just people from all over the world, uh, a guy in Russia. And uh, this was really the, the, the start of the, the social media echo that uh, uh, Rosetta uh, later became uh, uh, famous for. And of course, this was the, uh, the wake up, which uh, uh, we tweeted uh, uh, live in real time. Uh, we, we saw some really, really quick growth. Of course, the, uh, the Aza Rosetta Twitter account <coughs> was kind of quiet. Uh, it was flat because indeed we kept it completely un unpopulated uh, throughout the hibernation, and it was only after wake up uh, that we began tweeting. So as you can see, just in, in one day's time, uh, we jumped up from just a, just a couple of thousand to over 40,000 followers. So that was, that was pretty good for us. And of course, we were, we were getting coverage uh, by big uh, uh, mainstream media 
uh, telling people, hey, ESA is tweeting about this mission. You can follow it on Twitter. And of course, uh, that brought a lot of people to us that maybe otherwise would not have immediately uh, found out about us. Uh, this was a tweet that uh, I was pretty happy with. Uh, this was our, our actual wake up. Of course, if I go, go back, you'll see this was the start of the Rosetta account, and this is in the personified voice of the spacecraft. And we maintain that all throughout the Rosetta mission. The voice of the spacecraft was, 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 was clearly coming via at Isa Rosetta, and it was non-technical and non-scientific. It was extremely conversational. Whereas uh, the rest of our accounts, uh, in this case the Isa Operations account, that's where we maintained the... Um, the more, the more rigorous or perhaps the more traditional type of communication where we were giving hard numbers, um, uh, uh, hard facts, uh, not so conversational, uh, still uh, uh, written in, a, in a, a, a voice that can be um, understood by, by as wide a population as possible. Uh, and I think this was also good for, uh, we also had ESA Science, we had a number of other accounts uh, uh, tweeting on, on Rosetta, and uh, the fact that we, all re we immediately started getting uh, retweeted by some of the big accounts, uh, big accounts. so uh, NASA retweeted, we got retweeted by uh, some, some famous actresses, uh, this really helped to boost all of our, our social media activities. We had an Are We There, what, uh, Are we there Yet campaign, uh, which was coincided, coincided with the summer vacation because it was from January until August uh, before we arrived at the comet. Uh, again, this was uh, uh, very successful. Um, we had people uh, sending in uh, selfies from, from wherever they were traveling in the world for the summer vacation. We had people on top of mountains. We had people all over the place uh, um, uh, uh, helping us count down the clock to arrival at the, uh, at the comet. Of course, we got there on the 6th of August, uh, 2014. Uh, we, had, uh, we had some really cool coverage by then. We had uh, William Shatner, who's otherwise known as Captain Kirk. He was tweeting. Uh, we had some very famous uh, people in the UK. Of course, this was all done in English. Uh, we have our national language accounts that were echoing uh, many of these tweets. So we got coverage in, uh, in uh, lots of other European languages. Um, and again, after uh, what, what, what we found is that certain specific events, such as the wake up, such as the arrival, really uh, uh, gave a big, uh, big push to the, to the Twitter followerships uh, for, for many of our accounts. Uh, then it was Comet Landing, that was when, when Filet was actually coming uh, uh, dispatched from Rosetta and landing on the Comet. Uh, that was a fabulous week. We uh, conducted uh, more or less 24-hour uh, uh, social media coverage. We had uh, a, live, a live web stream going for uh, pretty much uh, most of 18 hours. We had um, <coughs> uh, uh, the Twitter conversation between Filet and Rosetta was, was live and active. And of course, Filet uh, ran out of battery power after, I forget, 55 or 60 hours, uh, uh, just on the, on, the, uh, on the Friday evening. So uh, their conversation ha had to end, and uh, I'll show you a link. I, can you pull up the link now on the uh, Washington Post article? This is one of my favorite articles that I saw in mainstream media uh, where a journalist uh, actually didn't report on the science of what was happening. This journalist reported on the fact of the discussion between the two accounts. If you just scroll down a little bit, this was in the Washington Post on uh, November 12th. And you go down, this uh, journalist is saying, hey, this is breaking our hearts. And uh, she actually picked out all the key tweets where uh, Rosetta is talking to Filet. And uh, it's like, okay, ready when you are, Rosetta. Give me a little nudge. Uh, uh, there was a point where contact is lost after, after the, uh, the separation. They got back in contact. Uh, they're chatting with each other. They're sending postcard. Rosetta is sending a postcard. Uh, sorry, uh, Filet is sending a postcard. Um, I see you, yes, this is great. Uh, and I, if you just pause it right there, you'll notice that if you read the text of the tweets, there's actually very little that is what maybe some of us would refer to as traditional or, or hard scientific 
facts or information or results. Actually, there, was no, there were no scientific results yet. The, uh, the lander hadn't landed. This was, was, was purely a conversation between two, two buddies. And I think that, combined with the, uh, the cartoons, which uh, uh, Marcos uh, mentioned earlier, uh, really, really, really helped to bring the whole uh, uh, Rosetta topic uh, into a, 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 a historic level for us anyways uh, of uh, public engagement. Okay, we can go back to the PowerPoint. <clears throat> okay, this is the number I'm, I'm most proud of, and that is that uh, during that week, uh, primarily uh, focused on landing day, which was the 12th, we achieved 4.4 uh, billion timeline deliveries on the on the comet landing hashtag. Uh, we, I mean, that was was it was it was all of Twitter. Not just uh, not just us, and that's uh, 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 by far the best result we've uh, we've ever had with uh, with anything. Our blogs did fabulous, millions of views. All the numbers were big. All, all the numbers were in the millions in terms of uh, reach, um, uh, uh, timeline timeline deliveries, uh, page views, and, and those sorts of things. And I'll just see if this works. Yeah, we got uh, all kinds of tweets coming from uh, famous people, politicians, Captain Kirk. Uh, Buzz Aldrin, our own astronauts, of course, tweeted away, which was great. Uh, our friends at NASA, who today have 24 million followers, and I'm jealous as heck, but anyways, they, uh, they were tweeting away. Uh, we even got uh, companies. Uh, KLM did something really nice, and that uh, really happened. Stephen Hawking, this is all fabulous stuff. And of course, if you make it into a Google Doodle, then you know you've, 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 you've done well. Okay, and uh, that's the link. If anybody wants to copy that down or grab a quick photo, and that will take you to the playlist of the Spanish language uh, Rosetta cartoons, which I, 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 I won't show you. Uh, uh, Marcos already mentioned, and you'll have the full playlist of all the uh, uh, the list of uh, cartoons. And they were they were fabulous. They were they were extremely well done. Ah, <coughs> oh, right. That's uh, back to the Washington Post uh, article. Uh, there was a little bit of negative stuff that came out of it. There was a bit of criticism. We had one particular problem where uh, our, uh, our project scientist had a shirt that some people thought was not appropriate when he was in one of the webcasts. Um, the littlest thing that you don't pay attention to when you're, when you're trying to be as open as possible uh, with video and audio and images and text, uh, the littlest, littlest thing can cause, uh, can cause uh, somebody to, to get upset. Um, we saw comments in our blog that were, were, were all over the place, from, from, from valid scientific critique to complete loony bin stuff. And actually, the effort, the, the, the person hour effort to actually moderate those comments and keep the blog going was, 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 was not nothing. It, uh, it uh, uh, cost, cost us a, a lot of time. Uh, but okay, there are a lot of positives as well. Uh, we, we, we got basically uh, a universal positive feedback in the sense of what you guys are doing is great and, and particularly more important for me is how you're communicating it is great. Uh, all of our channels got a, got a, a boost in, uh, in followership. Um, really important for us at uh, ESA's, even our own senior managers who, you know, mostly they're, they're focused each day on running the agency. Uh, even they were going home at night and saying, wow, my kids came up to me and said, Dad, Dad, I didn't know you did such cool stuff. Or Mom, Mom, I didn't know you did such cool stuff. So uh, really just within, within our own hierarchy and even our own uh, scientists and engineers were like, wow, we've really achieved something here. Um, uh, we demonstrated, we established the fact that some of the best communication is done without technical language. And ever since then, we've been able to use that very successfully when we're talking to our colleagues and we're talking to a, a flight director, a mission manager who, who wants us to, to, to tweet about or publicize something that's very technical. We, 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 we can now, uh, with, 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 with a lot of good justification, say, that's not quite the, the right way to do it. If you want to get out to a wide audience, we've got to do it uh, in a different way. Um, and of course, uh, uh, we establish the fact that uh, personification is, is a, a valuable thing to, to do. Uh, I'll quickly go through uh, another mission. This is now 2016. This is our ExoMars mission, which I mentioned earlier. This is uh, the Orbiter TGO, which uh, it was designed to go into orbit around, uh, around Mars. And that's the, uh, the lander, Schiaparelli, which is just separated there in this uh, impression. The lander, by the way, was a demonstration lander. It was a test lander. It was not meant to do very much, a little tiny bit once it got on the surface, and if it lasted three weeks, we would have been happy. If it would have lasted much less, we would have been happy. Um, it was actually uh, an engineering demonstration 
to gather data about uh, descending through the atmosphere. And uh, okay, um, let me see if I can do a quick little animation here. This will show you it was a very complex situation. This, this animation completely uh, uh, simplifies it, but the two of them have separated. They both go, uh, they, they both arrive at Mars. Schiaparelli lands on the surface and TGO has to do a very long engine burn. I forget exactly, I think it was two hours. Uh, to slow itself down, to be captured into orbit. And so our challenge in communicating was to communicate on the one hand that, uh, that Schiaparelli was doing this extremely complex landing, something that was new for ESA, new for us, new for Europe. And uh, ExoMars at the same time was doing this very critical uh, orbit entry, which if there were mistakes or problems or errors or mechanical uh, faults, that would affect things even by one second or just a few seconds, uh, that, would, the, the, that could cause us to, to actually lose our mission. If you, if you underperform on your burn, you, uh, it was actually on a collision course with Mars, so we would have hit the planet. If, if we over, uh, overperformed, uh, we wouldn't uh, do a uh, uh, enter into orbit, we wouldn't be captured, we'd just do a flyby and go into um, uh, solar orbit. Uh, uh, Schiaparelli had this very complex uh, descent, sequence with uh, um, the, uh, uh, the heat shield dropping away, the parachute opening. Um, it, for, for us, it was, a, it was a big challenge. This is, you, so you saw that Excel spreadsheet with all our tweets. We had one of those. It was much, much, uh, uh, much, uh, much bigger, much more, a lot more complex than just for a simple launch. And here was our last, uh, oh, by the way, as you, I think everybody knows, Schiaparelli had a problem uh, with the software. It actually, uh, um, it actually hit the surface at a high rate of speed, which was not according to the plan um, because of a software uh, issue. Um, and it was, uh, we didn't get the confirmation on that until uh, after the, the nominal time frame. So for us on, on, on Twitter, tweeting live, uh, this was our, our last nominal tweet. This was the last time we tweeted something that we knew for sure was, was happening. We then went through a series of uh, additional tweets where GMRT, by the way, is a radio telescope in Pune in India that was receiving uh, the signals live. And we were relying on the signals from Pune to tell us what was happening in the process of the descent. Uh, we saw that the signal had jumped, uh, but it wasn't exactly according to what we expected in terms of when or how much. Um, we could see that uh, EDM was, was then transmitting. That was good. Uh, that indicated that things were fine, that it separated from the parachute. Uh, it had some, some rockets to slow it down. We thought that would happen in just a, just a few more seconds. Um, we didn't get anything. Uh, we're there live tweeting, and it was the issue of, well, what do we say? How do we, uh, how do we uh, uh, cover this? Uh, we said, well, we can, we can always just tweet what we're actually doing uh, there at the Mission Control Center. We are still waiting. Uh, to, get a, to get a signal. Um, we knew when the uh, signal receipt slots uh, would, would be open and closed. We knew when we had passed them. We could then tweet, well, we've passed uh, uh, our, our transmission time. Uh, we don't have anything. We could tweet uh, also uh, very truthfully uh, that this was not unexpected. Uh, it could have happened that actually um, something could have happened that the uh, lander was doing quite well, but we still hadn't received the signal. And uh, of course, uh, we were recording that signal with uh, uh, Mars Express, our other orbiter. Uh, we had to wait for that to be downloaded. And of course, we had a blog post where we had explained in, in quite a lot of detail what could go wrong during the landing. We pointed people to that blog post. We said, you know, take a look at the blog post. You, you, know, you, you, you now know as much as we do. And uh, people seem to, to appreciate that. Um, and finally, we had to say, well, the recording that we got uh, was inconclusive. And uh, of, course, of course, we had some good news. Our orbiter did go into orbit just exactly as it was supposed to. That was excellent. Um, we could say that we were processing and analyzing the signals from uh, Schiaparelli that we did receive. And uh, that there was an upcoming relay pass via NASA orbiter. Uh, that was in a few hours. Uh, and finally, quoting our uh, head of mission operations saying, well, we're going to have to take a look at this. So that was live tweeting during uh, what in effect was the, the, the unplanned or unsuccessful completion of a, of a descent mission uh, that uh, uh, didn't go as, as planned. Okay, I'm gonna sum up here and we've, we've got some time for questions. 
Um, if I could say where we are now in 2017, in, uh, in summer, we've got a lot of activities coming up. We have uh, our ExoMars mission in 2020, which will be the, the, the big rover. We've got uh, launches coming up. We have uh, BepiColombo being launched, going to Mercury. We have lots of stuff happening across all ESA domains. I would say that uh, really our, our raw numbers via social media uh, aren't so important anymore. It, it, it doesn't so much matter if, if my Twitter account or if another Twitter account has another 100 or 1,000 followers. That's good, of course. But <clears throat> what's, what's important is that uh, we get a good reach and that we, have, uh, uh, we attract a good quality audience. And by reach, we're, we're very interested in making sure that media uh, see what we're, what we're doing as well. They have a, a very big amplification effect. Um, and as others have found, uh, it's not just ESA, uh, our own channels are just as effective for us now to get our message out to the public in, in multiple languages as it is to call up a journalist and say, why don't you come to our center and we'll put you in front of one of the engineers and you can have an interview and then publish that. Uh, that, that too is important, but our own channels are also uh, now extremely important. Uh, social media is really, uh, in my estimation, it's a platform from which we can now jump into other other domains. I mean, there, there are lots of audiences out there that ESA would, would very much like to attract uh, because we have, we, have, we, we have a good message and uh, if we can get into uh, other areas, uh, we're already doing stuff in the domain of art or in the realm of art, uh, design, clothing, textiles, uh, talking to developers. We're going more in the direction of open science and open communication, outreach, maker communities, all of those. Uh, should be natural targets for our message, and uh, we'd like to reach them uh, using social media as a, as a platform. The one key thing, and I, I probably should have put a, put a red circle around it, is this word right here, trust. Uh, as I've indicated, we've gained the trust of our scientists, our engineers. They know we're going to do it well. They know we're going to uh, pay attention to the details. We, we, they know we're, 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 we'll get the message right. And then furthermore, it's the trust with our audiences. I, 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 I feel uh, that we've done an extremely good job of informing our audiences, even when, when something's gone wrong, even when there's been a mistake made, even when we've uh, maybe communicated the wrong information. It does happen every so often. Uh, or when, when, when ESA is doing something that uh, uh, is tough to, to, to put a positive spin on, um, I, I, I think our audience knows that they're going to get good facts and, 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 and a very, very good signal to noise ratio uh, from us. And uh, my, my lesson that I've learned from all of this is that trust takes a long time to build up, uh, and it's very valuable, and it could be lost very, very quickly, so we shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't mess with that. And that's my, one of my favorite photos from the last couple of days. We're tweeting there for the uh, 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 Metron experiment when um, Tim Peake was on the ISS controlling a rover. That's all in front of me, you can't see it. But in the back is the, the, the Rolf Denzing. He's the, uh, the director of operations and our DG, Jan Werner's in the background there and I'm doing a selfie. So what else do you do on social media? Thank you very much. If you guys have got questions, I'm, I'm happy to, uh, to answer questions. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, si tenéis alguna pregunta y si la hacéis en inglés bien, si no, si es cortita, yo voy a intentar traducirla. O sea, que nada de ponencias bonsai y ese tipo de cosas. En inglés, por favor. Hello. Hi. Uh, well, I'd like to know how is working Spotify or SoundCloud uh, with your uh, social media strategy because uh, you talk mostly about Twitter, but uh, I really, I'm really interested in the music context. <laughs> oh, cool. No, that's a, that's a good question. Actually, that, that's one of the ones that was, uh, it's a bit of a surprise for us. We started SoundCloud as just a kind of a hobby channel. Uh, a couple have said, well, SoundCloud's cool. We like music. Let's just set up a use of SoundCloud. And we, more or less got official permission in the sense that our bosses said, yeah, we don't care, just you know, make sure you don't uh, uh, spend too much time on it. And uh, we actually had a really good success because we had a sonification coming from the Rosetta mission uh, just before arrival at the comet or uh, just in late July and early August as we got closer to the comet, one of the instruments, and I, I, the details don't matter, one of the instruments was, was generating data on uh, the uh, uh, solar particle activity around the comet. And we, we actually worked with a musician in, uh, in, in Germany 
uh, a composer to actually do a sonification of that. And we stuck that into SoundCloud and, and, and we did not, I mean, we tweeted it and we put it in Facebook and said, oh, you can hear this, it's kind of cool, it sounds, sounds kind of funny. And within the, uh, the month of November for that, uh, that mission, uh, we hit, uh, I think it was 6.5 million uh, listens on, on, on just that one sonification. And uh, so the channel is soundcloud.com slash ESA, if anyone wants to take a look at it. And we, 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 we've since put, a, put, a, put a, a lot more stuff in there. And we're actually looking forward to using that uh, in the next little while to actually go out to the community, the uh, electronic music composer community, and give people opportunities to say, hey, we've got a video coming up, we've got a trailer coming up, we've got an activity coming up, we need some music. And uh, uh, if anyone wants to send us something, we can credit you, we won't uh, necessarily uh, pay you for it but we'll, we'll, we'll give you wide exposure. And so far, just in the chat we see in, in SoundCloud, there, there's a huge amount of interest. So it's a, it's a really, really good thing to do. So if anybody is working in communication where you can get any kind of audio noise, <laughs> stick it in SoundCloud, people, people will love it. Yes, hello. You mentioned that you have changed uh, the communication culture in NISA. You mentioned that you have gained the trust of your scientists. But I would like to know uh, how did you do that? Uh, how long did it take? I would like you to go through that process, please. Oh, boy. Uh, I'm probably best to answer that offline because it's, it's, a, it's a long explanation. What, what, what I can say is it, it, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes a lot of uh, diligent work, and and when you're trying, you know, your, your your own harshest critics are always yourself and your immediate colleagues and and the people that you're working with. Uh, even the public are sometimes not as not as harsh, and it just takes. Um, uh, you have to make sure that you get the details right. Our scientists and engineers that uh, uh, we work with. They're very, very focused on details, and, and rightly so, because everything to do with space flight, uh, by the way, that problem with, with uh, Schiaparelli, where it ended up uh, 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 creating a new Martian crater, uh, it was a difference in timing in the way the software was reacting of just a couple of seconds. I mean, people uh, uh, in the space business, they're very focused on details, and we had to show them that we too would be focused on details. We could play with the wording, we could play with the language, we could play with how we characterize things, uh, we could, we, we, the, the, we had lots of latitude, but we had to demonstrate that we would pay attention to, to the details that we knew were important to our, our colleagues. And, and there's a lot more to it. We can, we can chat after. <laughs> Hi, Daniel. My name is Aline. I'm from the, uh, um, the Institute of Technology and Meteorology in Brazil. And I'm attending a PhD in History of Science here in Science Communication. And I've read that you are a journalist and you have a spe a specialization in physics and maths, correct? I, 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 my studies were in physics yeah. and math, and I, I, I later were, and I, I initially worked as an engineer, and I later worked as a journalist. Yes. Yeah, and we, when we came uh, to an event like that, uh, we see people from humans, from journalism, um, PR, or from physics and maths. And in my class, it, it, my class is really mixed. Uh, do you think uh, it's a tendency to mix everything, people have multiple, um, form multiple formation like this. Uh, just uh, to the approval process um, to deal, a journalist deal with a physics or a math, I think, uh, do you think it's important to have both? Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll answer your question in more detail afterwards. The, the short answer is that you, you've got to have both. Uh, I showed you some photographs of me standing beside or sitting or working beside a couple of the engineers uh, at ESOC. Actually, uh, uh, one of those guys, uh, uh, my, my, my buddy Thomas, he's an engineer, but he's excellent with communicating. I, I, I can hand him the password to Twitter and say, Tom, please tweet this activity. I, I, I'm on a day off or I'm busy on something else. And, and he can do it, and yet he's an engineer. Uh, there are lots of engineers where I work that I would not give them the Twitter password because it's, it's, it's not going to go well. Likewise, we have um, people working in our communication team who are very good communicators. They've studied uh, uh, quite a lot in, in journalism, but they, they, they really have, uh, have, have, have no background or, or, or no clue as to how one of our grand stations works 
and how it is that we could lose a signal coming from Mars because there's some technical problem at the, at the ground station and how to describe that in a way that we can make it clear to the public that you know it's a problem and we're, and we're trying to fix it. So it's not one or the other, you've really got to have both. And, and, and I think uh, as we at ESA uh, get into something that's uh, a little bit more in the direction of open communication, I think you're going to see that we will actually ask our scientists and our engineers uh, who wish to, to join us in that, that, that job of communicating. And, 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 and I, I think that's gonna happen more often. I certainly see it happening more often at my center in, uh, in ESOC. Okay, uh, thank you. Daniel, I think we can applaud Daniel. It's been a great talk. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.